Bayshore Rehoboth. Man, it is so good to see you guys. I, I am, listen, I am pumped up to be back with y'all. Is, is anybody pumped to be in church today? Anybody glad to be here? I love that, man. I love it. Uh, I feel like it's been so long since I've been like physically here that I should just like introduce myself again. And nothing's changed. Uh, hi, I'm Joel, and I'm still addicted to Mountain Dew. I thought I'd get a hi, Joel, or a, hey, we miss you. No, it's all good. It's good. It's good. Um, I, listen, I miss you guys. I miss seeing Miss Patsy. I miss seeing Butch. I, listen, I even missed our, our sewer pipes from Casapulas right here, okay? I missed in the middle of my message hearing the toilet flush, okay? But I, I've been on uh, what our staff has called the Bay Shore Money Campus Tour. And I'm like, well, you didn't give me a tour bus, okay? So it's not really a tour. Um, but I was at our Millsburg campus two weekends ago. And then last weekend, I got to be at our newest campus, our Fenwick location. And Millsboro and Fenwick are live with us right now. And so I just want you to show them how we do it in the basement and make some noise for our Millsboro campus, our Fenwick campus, and our online family. <laughs> Love that you guys are here, and uh, if you've missed the last few weeks, we've been in this money series called Back in Black, and um, good news, after today's message on money, okay, this series is over. <laughs> Come on, I know you don't want to talk about money, so turn to the person next to you and say, oh, thank goodness, thank goodness. <laughs> All right, now I want you to turn to the person on your other side, we're going to call them your second choice. And just say, hey, I'm sorry I picked you second, but since it's serious about money, I'm going to give you some money right now. Um, No, I'm kidding. Some of you are like, I'm never going to give anybody money. Um, But uh, I'm really excited to be wrapping this series up, and I'm calling this message, and we'll put this on the screen. I'm calling this message, Boxes and Ketchup Bottles. And I know everybody in Millsboro and Fenwick right now is like, what in the world? When is Pastor Danny coming back? Next week, okay? He's coming back next week in Millsboro and Fenwick. We're hoping you got to put up with me next week, okay? Um, but I, I just, uh, I want to start out this way. Um, I, I know I always kind of like ask a question, but instead of asking a question to start out, uh, I just want to tell you something. I can read your mind. I can. It's, you know, it's a pastor's superpower. I don't know if you know, but pastors, we have superpowers. Like for instance, my, I can make my, my Bible hover above my desk when I'm studying, I can glow in the dark, and I can read minds, okay? Pastor superpowers. And so here's my pastor superpower at work, okay? I'm reading your minds right now, and some of you have heard me talking about money the last few weeks, and you think I'm cheap. You know, you know I'm cheap. Since I can read your mind, and listen, Millsboro and Fenway, you got to play along, all right? Just raise your hand if you think I am pastor tight. Raise your hand if you think I am pastor tight. Okay, wait, wait, keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. I got to figure out who I am not sending a Christmas card to this year. Listen, I'm tight. I'm not going to waste my money on you all on postage if you all like, think I'm cheap. Listen, I am cheap. I am so cheap that I have driven around the McDonald's drive through twice before to use two coupons. That's true. And don't judge me. Somebody at one of our campuses has done it. Raise your hand if you've ever done that before. <laughs> yes, yeah, see, there were. So I am cheap, all right? But what you may not know, Millsboro and Fenwick, you may not know this. I don't think Rehoboth knows this, but my wife is way cheaper than me. <laughs> like, she is the captain of cheap town, you guys, okay? I have seen my wife wash paper plates to save money. <laughs> My, this is true. My wife will eat leftover food to save money that is so old. All right, I'm like over there like, ur, ur. and she's like, it's good. You know, mold is flavor, you know? <laughs> so she is, she is cheap. And so keep that in mind. And um, a few months ago, Stacey came home from work one day and she was like, hey, honey, one of my coworkers is selling um, Girl Scout cookies for her daughter. Because I, I, her daughter, I guess, wanted to, she wanted to sell like 100 boxes or something, you know, probably to save lives and help people. 
And so I'm thinking, we're getting Girl Scout cookies, you know. And listen, I'm cheap, but I will give the Girl Scouts of America all of my money for Samoas. Okay, listen, my kids, they don't need new clothes for school or new shoes. What we need in our house are Samoas, okay? And so I was like, we're getting Girl Scout cookies. I'm like, baby, what, what kind did you get? And she's like, I didn't buy any of those boxes. They were $5 a piece, $5 a piece. And I'm like, I know, but isn't that a good deal? And she's over there like washing off a paper plate, like $5. I'm going to eat my five-month-old moldy meatloaf tonight for free. <laughs> anyway, we gave $20 for the Girl Scout cookies, you know, because somebody in the house had to have Samoas. Okay. Um, and I wanted to get like, I did some like deep research on Girl Scout cookies this week. And so I, I don't know if you know what the top three selling Girl Scout cookies are, but who at every campus, do you like Girl Scout cookies? Anybody like Girl Scout cookies? Okay, here's what, all, here's what the research says about the top three selling Girl Scout cookies. The number three top selling Girl Scout cookie are Tagalongs. Where are the Tagalong people at? You love the Tagalongs? Oh, yeah, you put that peanut butter and chocolate together, the Lord is good, right? Amen, Amen to that. Um, next, uh, Samoas are number two. Where am I? That's my personal favorite. Where are the Samoa people at? Woo! That coconut crunch butch? Oh! I will two-step and cowboy boogie that, man. Like. And then last, but number one, top selling Girl Scout cookie are... Okay, who's in the Thin Mints? Weirdos. Terrible choice. Uh, I don't like those. But I, I was going to get... I was going to get some Girl Scout cookies for this talk, but apparently they're out of season. But this is where my cheap wife comes into play. She had taught me that Audi over here has knock-off Girl Scout cookies. Listen, who needs Samoas when you got Benton's Caramel Coconut Fudge cookies for $1.88? And listen, I've never had these, but I have had the Tagalong knockoffs. I'm going to say it. They're better. I mean, the church just got smaller. Some of you are leaving. It's okay. But these are better. Um, but there's, there's one problem with this, and I ran into this problem last night on my couch, and that's true. The serving size is two cookies. What kind of psycho only eats two cookies? That's the pregame. That's when you're just warming things up. You know what I'm saying? I think it should be two sleeves. Right? Who thinks two sleeves? Because when I have one or two good ones, like I want, what do I want? More. more. We want more. Okay, so I can't have these in my house. So I'm going to give these out to somebody here. And Millsboro and Fenwick, you're going to get some cookies too. Somebody at your campus is going to give out some cookies. So Josiah, it was Josiah's birthday three days ago. Josiah, there you go, buddy. So here's, here's my point. Millsboro, Fenwick, everybody kind of come back to me. My point is, I think we have the same problem. Every single person has the same problem in life as we have with Girl Scout cookies. If it's good, we want some more. And if it's, you know, if some is good, then more is going to be better, right? This is why, like, um, for instance, I, I went to um, a buffet for the first time in, like, I probably... 20 years, I went to a buffet last weekend, okay? And the, the last buffet I think I went to was uh, the, the Bonanza in Millsboro. Millsboro campus knows about the Bonanza. Um, but this buffet, or I call it the buffet, the buffet was at the Delmarva Shorebirds game, and we got the, the tickets with the buffet, praise the Lord. And I got, this is not a lie, two cheeseburgers, a hot dog, and a pulled pork sandwich by the second inning. <laughs> And I was like, and you'll relate to this. Oh, I'm never going to eat ever again. <laughs> then the seventh inning stretch. <laughs> I could get some more. <laughs> Can you relate to that? Yep. I just wanted some, some more. I remember the very first time that I got um, a paycheck with a comma. <laughs> there's a comma. I'm like, there's a comma. I will never need any more money ever again. Then I found out the, that my employer had gone from like weekly paychecks to bi-weekly. All right, that's why. But anyway, 
no matter if that was the case or not, eventually you, you think, oh, I'll never need more, but eventually you're going to want what? More. more. And so like everything is like in our culture says the answer, the answer is more. If some is good, we want more. And that's why we're always looking to the next thing to kind of like buy. That's why we have things saved in our Amazon cart. Come on, because when payday hits, you got to hit that buy button. Who's, who's ever saved something in your Amazon cart for the perfect moment? Oh, yeah. Who's got something in there right now? You're like, yeah, <laughs> waiting for payday, baby. And so, listen, marketing has convinced us that con- contentment comes from the next purchase. Contentment is just in that next purchase. And today, I just want to tell you that contentment isn't in your next purchase. Contentment is all in your perspective. Contentment is not in your next purchase. It is in your perspective. And this is what I'm learning. I wrote this down this week because this is like helping me. Contentment doesn't come from getting more of what you want. Contentment comes from being more grateful for what you already have. It doesn't come from getting more of what we want. It comes from being more grateful for what we already have. And and contentment like that can make you feel richer than any bank account ever can. Contentment like that can make you feel richer than that poor guy who won the mega millions in Illinois. I was hoping it was a Delaware person. I was really hoping it was a Bayshore person. We're going above ground quick, buddy. But listen, contentment can make you feel richer than any bank account can, than any lottery ticket can, than buying more or getting more of whatever. And I know like maybe in Millsboro, maybe Fenwick, you're like, what on earth is this hyper guy talking about? Like, what does he mean? Like, you know, real content means you'll be real rich. Um, I I just want to show you where I get this idea in the Bible. And this is in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. And 1 Timothy, you probably think, who wrote it? Timothy, okay, that will be what you think. But this is a guy named Paul, because he's trying to trick you all out, okay? And so Paul says this. He says, yet true godliness with what? With contentment is itself great wealth. Come on, Bashar, who wouldn't mind some great wealth? Who would not mind some great wealth? Paul's like, you can have it. You just need some more Jesus and some more contentment, and you'll have great wealth. And then he explains why. He says, after all, we brought nothing with us when we came into the world, and we can't take anything with us when we leave it. Now, you know this, okay? I know you know this because back row people, maybe overflow people, have you ever seen a a horse pulling a (laughs) U-Haul? Have you seen it? Because I have not. Because you can't take it with us. And so here's what qualifies if you're rich or not. He says, so if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content. Now, I can't speak for Millsboro and Fenwick, but I can speak for Rehoboth. Nobody here is naked. (laughs) Which I'm grateful for. And so, listen, I just, maybe you came to church to hear this today. If you're content, you're rich. You're rich. Matt, you're rich. You're rich. Bing, rich. Rich. Millsburg campus, you're rich. Femma campus, you're rich because you're not naked and you're not starving. I'm looking around here and don't look like anybody in the room has been hungry in a long time. <laughs> Eating real good, okay? Now, when we talk about being content, maybe you're like, oh, I guess I shouldn't have ambition then. Okay, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have ambition. I'm not saying that God doesn't want to, like, bless you. I believe God loves to bless his people, and I hope he blesses you so that you can bless us by buying us the peebles over there so we can move in over there. I'm not saying that, like, you shouldn't be ambitious. I am saying, though, don't fall for the marketing lie that more whatever will lead to a rich life because only more Jesus and more contentment will truly lead us to a rich life. And the good news is you can walk out of here today with that. And I don't know if you know this, but do you know all the research shows that anything you get more than your basic needs, okay? So more than your house, more than your food and your clothing, more than your car, even if you drive a hoopty car, you know, one of those that you have to, you have to roll the window down. 
And then, yeah, like on the court, okay, you roll the window down and the, the headliner flops in the wind, you know. That's still, once those basic needs, once our basic needs are covered, anything we get more than that, all the research shows, it barely moves the joy needle. Barely. And I know this because like a couple years ago, I was at Disney, the happiest place on earth. And I was standing in line for the Toy Story ride, okay? The, the Slinky Dog Dash. A two-hour line. I'm standing there, and they play Pharrell singing happy over the, the thing, like, because I'm happy. I'm like, shut up, Pharrell. I ain't happy in this line. Why? Because anything above our basic needs barely moves the joy needle. And so I just, I just have one point for you today, which is a miracle in and of itself. But I have a miracle, or one point for you, and we'll put this on the screen. And it's just this. This is today's point. I just need a little more, and then I'll be content, is a myth. It's totally a myth. Totally a myth. And we've been talking about money and how to like, you know, maybe get more in that area. But just saying money itself or getting more will make us content is a myth. Now, I heard a joke the other day. You want to hear the joke? Sure. Mills from Fenwick, you want to hear the joke? Yeah. I heard him. Pastor superpower. We can hear through the camera. Anyway, um, here's a joke. Who is more content? The person with five kids? <laughs> Listen, this is not a joke about our worship leader, Bo Jukes, okay? But who is more content? The person with five kids or the person with $5 million? Five kids or $5 million? Five kids or $5 million? Five kids. The Rehoboth campus failed the test, okay? Um, <laughs> but the person who's more content is the person with five kids. Because they don't want any more. <laughs> They're good. Listen, the person with five million dollars, you know what he wants? Six. The person with five kids has never said, I want six. <laughs> Um, listen, contentment is about being happy with what you already have, which is like kind of hard to do. And so what do we do? Um, I think what we do is when we're we're not content, you know, we got to look at what we already have. And so the secret to my joy, the secret to your joy, the secret to our joy, isn't getting more of what we want. It's wanting more of what we already have. The secret to our joy isn't getting more of what we want, it's wanting what we already have, okay? And one of my life's philosophies is, is if I want my blessings to count, I have to count my blessings. And so uh, I'm going to count my blessings for you guys with my blessing box. All right, so uh, my kids, uh, by, by the way, I got this out of my garage this week, um, this box. It had paint supplies in it, which is not a blessing, so we took all that junk out, and I have my kids label this, okay, blessing box. Nora Nixon did one each. And I just put some things in here that are a blessing to me. And you have a blessing box, whether you know it or not, but you have a blessing box, okay? So I'm just going to go through some of my blessing box things, okay? So first off in here, speaking of my family, my kids, this is a picture we'll put on the screen of my family. Uh, these are my three favorite people in, in the whole galaxy, and by the way, I, sh- I should point out, when you're eating ice cream, if it's not running off your elbows, <laughs> you are not doing it right, okay? <laughs> but my family, I put them on a blessing box because my family, they are, blessing doesn't even catch what they are to me. So they obviously go in my blessing box. Um, Next in my blessing box is somebody who's in my family that's not in this picture. And uh, this, is, this is my dog Eli's favorite toy, Mr. Ducky. <laughs> and listen, my dog is, he's geriatric years right now. He's incontinent, all right? But you give him Mr. Ducky, his favorite toy for 13 years, listen, that dog, will, he will... <laughs> It's the most activity he does all day, but he comes to life. And so, <laughs> Mr. Ducky, okay, um, is in my blessing box. Here's my Bible. This is uh, definitely in my blessing box, and this is what I have that, that 
floats above my desk when I study Pastor Superpower. Um, But this is definitely in my blessing box because this book reminds me daily that I have a God in heaven who loves me, who has my back, who picked me. I have a God in heaven who put me together before I was even born. I have somebody who won't walk away from me when I walk away from him. Like there's God is infinitely the greatest thing that's ever happened in my life. And so there's no doubt that this is going to be in my blessing box. Aren't you thankful that Jesus is there for us and we have him in our life? Is anybody thankful for that? So this is definitely in there. Um, Rehoboth knows what this is. Everybody in Millsboro and Fenwick's like, what's in that koozie? Okay. Um, what is it, Rehoboth? Mountain Dew. And what you may not know is this is a Bayshore koozie, okay? So listen, if I got a Mountain Dew and a Bayshore koozie and I'm on some beach, because I'm thankful that's in the blessing box too, if I'm on some beach somewhere, I'm good. I'm good. I love Mountain Dew. But you know what? I love my church more than I love Mountain Dew. I love you guys. Um, Some of you are like, oh, he loves us more than a beverage. I'm glad, like, the bar's real low, apparently. Like, oh, we really mean a lot to him. Um, but you, you guys really do, honestly. There's not a better church on the planet. There's not a better group of people. There's not a, a better volunteer group. There's not a more loving group of people, a more generous group of people. I just got to go visit all three campuses. Our church isn't just in a basement. Our church is in Fenwick. Our church is in Millsboro. Our church is big and making a difference. And I'm thankful for you all. I love you guys. I love you guys. Now, let's just get this out of the way. The Ravens are in here. uh, And listen, you need to know, Jesus wants you to be a Ravens fan. And it's biblical, all right? Millsboro and Fenwick, it is biblical. Let me me just show you. This is from Jesus. This is what Jesus said in uh, Luke 12, 24. Consider the, did Jesus say consider the Washington commanders? Did he say fly, eagles, fly? Yes. Yes. No, yes. he did not. Yes. Look, yes. y'all are sinning right now. We're going to move on. Okay. Um, I'm, you know, I, I'm thankful for my car. I love my car. It gets me from point A to point B. What I do not love and what I'm not thankful for is the Bayshore Community Church bumper sticker for my car. Okay, I don't listen. I have too much road rage to put this on my car. I don't, terrible idea, so I don't put that on my car. Um, what else do we have in here? Uh, I'm thankful for this represents my house. <laughs> All the men are like, oh, we get that. TV controller, we get it. <laughs> Both Think and Dukes built my house in 2020, and basically, we built our house so that I could get a new TV. <laughs> so I'm thankful for, for my home. Um, uh, last but not least, I am thankful for my health. This is my pillbox um, that my cheap wife got me for free on Facebook, and it was used. That is not a lie. I'm like, are you, are you trying to kill me? And she, this is what she said. I ran it through the dishwasher. Anyway, <laughs> well, look, here's what I know. When, when we're going through life and we're looking in our blessing box, when we're looking at what God gave us, we can sing, because I'm happy, right? We're thankful. Isn't it true that when you're looking in your blessing box, you are thankful? Man, listen, you feel good when you're focusing on your blessing box. You, it doesn't, you may not sing good, but you feel good. The problem is when we start to look at other people's blessing box. You know what I'm saying? Well, look at, look at Chris's blessing box. It's bigger than my blessing box. Amy's blessing box, bigger. You know, just, uh, and we start looking around, right? Like, I, God, why couldn't you make my blessing box bigger? Why couldn't you put their house in my blessing box? What about that black stone grill? And you put that in mine, God? What, what about his six-pack of abs? I'll take one. Could you put one in there? One ab, Lord. 
I'm curious, who, who has ever looked at other people's blessing box? You compared before. You ever done that before? Yeah, listen, I, I unfortunately just got on, back on Facebook to sell something. And, you know, we love Facebook. I'm glad that we're on there for the church. But, like, it's, I'm not a big social media fan. I just got on there to, to get rid of something. I was on there back on for one day. One day, and I'm like, honey, Butch and Amy, they're going on vacation. I wish we could go on vacation. <laughs> hey, honey, did you see Hans's bicep? Look at Hans. Look at, no, don't look at his bicep. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I want, I want Hans's bicep. Look, the, the Jacksons redid their kitchen. Must be nice. Come on, who's ever played the comparison game before? Yes. Yeah, it's our favorite play, game to play. But nothing will make us lose our contentment like comparison. Nothing. And so what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? We look in our blessing box. The, don't, don't be like, you know, side eye and everybody else's blessing box. Just, just, you got a blessing box. God has filled up your blessing box. And so Millsboro, family, what do you do? You thank God for what's in your box. Don't get mad at God for what's not in your box. Listen, if he wanted that to be in your box, he would have put it there. And you may not want that blessing in your box because did you know that every blessing comes with a burden? Do you know that? Every one, Okay. Let's go, for instance, kids. <laughs> kids are a blessing, right? Yeah. But they're a burden. <laughs> you know, my boy Nixon, I don't think he's flushed the toilet in seven years. <laughs> maybe, maybe you're single and you're like, oh, I, just, I wish that we were happily married. I wish I was happily married like them. Well, no, number one, they've only been married for two minutes. Give it a second, okay? <laughs> Number two, having a good marriage takes work, work. Yeah. effort. Okay, you don't just wake up like, oh, my marriage is great because I've done nothing. Okay, no, no, no. It is work. <laughs> There's a burden with it, okay? Um, maybe you're like, I wish I made as much money as them. I wish I made, I wish I was Tom Brady yeah, no. making $20 million. I could throw a ball around, especially if I deflate it a little bit. <laughs> Listen, do you know how many hours successful people put in to get where they're at? Do you know? Like, you've never heard the post-Super Bowl interview. Like, Aaron Andrews is interviewing, like, the quarterback. Like, hey, how'd you do it? How, how, Tom, how did you win a, another Super Bowl at 73? Was it the Metamucil? <laughs> like, like, Tom, how did you do it? You, it? Just imagine Tom Brady being like, I don't know. I just got off the bus here. <laughs> you know what he'd say? He's like, no, the, how I got here is I've been practicing since I was two. I've had sugar since Michael Jackson wrote Thriller. <laughs> and so you may want some of their blessings in your box, but be careful what blessings you want in your box because every blessing comes with a burden. And so I hope you get, you know, the, the kids and the happy marriage and the dream job with the Tom Brady salary. Yeah, I hope you get all that stuff. But just know if you put it in your box, there's a weight to it. It weighs something. And then with what's in our box, sometimes we see our own blessings as a burden. I don't know if you know that or not, but um, let me give you, for instance, um, a few weeks ago, my in-laws uh, had my kids camping. And they took my kids camping for five days in a row. <laughs> Five days in a row, my kids were gone. And so me and my wife, we, this is true. We went on five dates in five days. We went five for five. I don't think we've had five dates in five years. We were like, we're going on every one of them. We're doing this back in black series. We are in the red. We're like, whatever. <laughs> and so around day two, I'm in my house and I'm like, something's different. Like, Stacey, are you picking up what I'm picking up? I'm like, this house is so clean. <laughs> Listen, parents, our houses would be clean if it weren't for our kids. Is this not true? Amen. And listen, I know it's my kids. Chris is excited. Um, I know it's my kids who make a mess because they were back for two minutes and the place looked like a nuclear bomb went off. And I'm like, it's you. You're the reason this place looks and smells like a frat house, kids. 
And so in this, every time my kids walk into my house, they go out the garage steps, they totally disrobe as they walk in the house. <laughs> totally. Okay, like hat, shirt, pants, just shoes, everything. All, and I'm like, I am not your butler, like Nixon. Okay, nobody wants to see your streaky white underwear <laughs> on the steps, you know, full moon running around the house, like pick up your mess. I am not your butler. And so sometimes they, they feel, my kids can feel like a, a burden. But let me, let me just tell you, one day my kids are going to be grown and gone. And, and I can't believe I'm going to say this. But I'm going to wish I had some dirty underwear on the steps to step over. Save him a scrapbook. So, yeah, save him in the scrapbook. That's all you need. <laughs> but I'm going, to miss, I'm going to miss, no, listen, I'm going to miss knowing my kids are upstairs at night sleeping in their bed. I'm going to miss hearing them run around my house, even though I know it's like them just towing things all over the place. I'm going to miss that. And so maybe butler dad me should smile a little bit more because I am, my kids are one of the greatest blessings that will ever be given to me by the Lord. And so sometimes all we see in our blessing box is the burden that comes along with that, okay? Maybe, maybe for you, you uh, you're at work and all you see is the stress and the pressure instead of being grateful for the job that you have. Or maybe you have a house and all you see is the problems with the house. Okay, the floor is creaking, the toilet is leaking, you know, the dog chewed a hole in the floor again. That happened to us when we were growing up. We had a Rottweiler named Teddy. <laughs> Ate the linoleum floor in the kitchen, hole this big. We left it there with a rug for like my whole childhood. <laughs> and it's true. But listen, you can only see that you can see the problems in your house or you can be thankful that that house is a blessing for you. Or maybe, you know, husbands, all you see is the mess your wives leave in the bathroom on the counter. This is not a personal thing. This is not about Stacy. Don't you look at me like that. But husbands, I know that 98% of the usable counter space is filled up with her stuff. And you're like, I wish I could just, I, I pay for this mortgage too. Can I get some counter space? The answer is no. It's never going to happen, okay? Just give it up. But here's the thing. You can look past the burden and see the blessing of, I get, I get somebody to, to share life with. Look past the burden and say, I have the blessing of a house, even if it's not like my dream house. Or I have the blessing of, you know, kids, even if they're like messy in the house, like that's a blessing that God gave me. And this hit me this week. Right now, there is somebody praying for the very blessing that you already have that you only look at as a burden. Right now, someone somewhere is praying, wanting the very blessing that you already have that maybe you only see as a burden. And so I'm, I'm going to drill this home. Um, I, I want us to like look at 1 Timothy 6, 6 through 8, just one more time. In every campus, we're going to read this whole verse out loud so we can get this like inside of us. And so Millsboro, Fenwick, when I get to three, just read it out loud. One, two, three. Yet true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. After all, we brought nothing with us when we came into the world, and we can't take anything with us when we leave it. So if we can't enough food and clothing, let us be content. Let us be content. So I think somebody came to church today to hear this. You have great wealth. You're rich. You are rich. Okay, I thought people would be more excited. <laughs> Woo, you're rich. Turn to the person next to you and say, congratulations, you're rich. You're rich. <laughs> and if you want to get richer, get more content. The more content you are, the more rich you are. And I, I, listen, I know like some of you are like, I don't feel rich. You know, like I, I know you're stressed about your money. I know you're stressed about your work. I know you're stressed about your 401k. Which, by the way, just the second quarter statement, you don't want to look at it. <laughs> don't look at it. It's not going to be a blessing, okay? But no matter how much money you have or don't have, you can walk out of church today saying, I'm rich. I, I am happy. Because God has poured so many blessings in your life, but your perspective can be a bottleneck from seeing those blessings. Now, speaking of um, bottles, uh, everybody, or one per family, you should have gotten some ketchup when you walked in today. I know some of you walked in and you're like, French fries? 
they gave me ketchup. This is the weirdest church I've ever been to. Okay. But we got some, we got some ketchup. Now, we, we did one for family. And so Millsboro and Fenwick, you should have one of these as well. Uh, we did one for family because I'm Pastor Tight, and these are like a dollar a piece. So I hope you gave big today because a third of our budget just went to Heinz ketchup, all right? Um, but listen, I, I know that you want God to bless you. I know you want God to put more in your blessing box. And I think our lives are a little bit like Heinz 57 ketchup. Now, I'm curious, uh, how many of you uh, like condiments? You into the condiment situation? Woo! Me too, man. Like, I love honey mustard. Eat, what? Yeah. Give away my secrets, man. Okay. Who likes, but who likes condiments again? One more time. You like condiments? Okay. I love it. I love honey mustard with a little side of chicken nuggets. All right. That's, I love some condiments. And when I was growing up, we used to go to the Millsboro Diner and uh, they had Heinz 57 ketchup bottles, full size ones, kind of like this on every table. Um, and so, and I was going to get you all full size ones, but they were like $3 a piece. And I love you. Not that much. All right. So... <laughs> Anyway, I would always get a cheeseburger at the diner, and they, it was like, it was diner good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just, which means it wasn't that good, but if you put a bunch of ketchup on it, it's okay. And so I would always pick up the Heinz 57 ketchup bottle, and the first thing I do is I turn it upside down, and what happened? Nothing. 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 <laughs> happened to you too, didn't it? Yeah. And you can't squeeze it. This is, this is glass. This isn't plastic. We are saving the turtles. This is glass. And so that one worked. And so then I would like, did, did this happen? Did, did it work? No, nothing came out. Okay. And then you'd start like, you get like mad and you're like, I want this cheeseburger. And you shake, 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 shake that bottle, shake that bottle. Okay. You're like, you're like, I have to just trying to shake. And did that work? No. So then you get desperate. You get a knife. You try to murder the ketchup bottle. Okay. You're like, and that's a dangerous move because either it's not going to work or all 57 varieties are going to come out at one time. <laughs> but did you know on the regular size Heinz 57 ketchup bottles that they have a 57 etched in the glass and they engineered the bottle specifically that if you turn the bottle sideways and you tap, tap, tap that 57, it unclogs and all of the ketchup starts flowing out. Welcome to church. Welcome to Bay Shore. We teach the deep stuff here. Don't worry, Mills, where I'm feeling like Pastor Danny's coming back next week. All right, so. But listen, hold, hold up your Heinz 57 ketchup bottle if you got it. Okay? If you don't have it, just hold it up in spirit, whatever. Listen, I think our lives, we look at our lives a lot like this ketchup bottle. We're like, God's not pouring out any blessings in my life. It's stopped up. It's, it's bottleneck. God, can you? I'm like, there's no blessing. There's, it's not coming out. Lord, look, Christine's bottle's working. Would you? Why? Why isn't my bottle working? Good Lord, would, could you look? And I, she's got the full size bottle. I don't, like I, and and it's, we feel like it's not working. We feel like God's blessings aren't pouring out in our life. And maybe God's blessings pouring out in our life are as easy as tapping the fifty seven. It's as easy as picking up your blessing box and tapping this and just looking at what's in here. Because listen, you are not, there's not a blessing bottleneck in your life. Anyone in the room, any of our churches, there is not a blessing bottleneck. Right now, somebody is praying for the very blessings that you already have. And so what do we do? Tap, tap, tap. Tap that blessing box. You just got to look in here. When you tap on this, you start to see all the blessings that God has flowed out and poured out in your life already. We're always looking for the next thing that's going to pour out, but God has already poured out good things in your life right now. You just got to look in here. And so I'm, I'm going to give you all some homework, all right? Here's the homework. I'm going to give you one habit that you can start tonight that will make you rich no matter what is in or not in your bank account. And so here's the habit. Begin and end your day giving thanks to God for the blessings he's given you. Begin and end your day by tapping your blessing box. And so when you wake up in the morning, God, thank you that I had a bed to sleep in last night. You wake up in the morning, maybe you're walking to the bathroom and you got like a, you know, you have a bad knee. So you're like stanky leg walking to the bathroom. But you just say, God, I got one good knee. Woo! 
Tap that blessing box. And then at night, like, God, thank you for giving me the patience for eight hours to put up with my boss today. Tap that blessing box. God, thank you for air conditioning. It is July and it is hot. God, thank you that you have given me a family. Thank you for the family I have, even the ones I don't really like that much, okay? God, thank you for my health. God, thank you for your son, Jesus, who came and loves me and is there for me and walks me through my darkest valley. God, thank you, thank you, thank you. And you just tap on that blessing box. Everybody say, tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, 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 blessing box. Listen, I think if you want to get back in black, if you want to get rich, like truly rich in life, you just got to look at all the blessings God has poured out in your life. There's not a bottleneck. Things haven't stopped flowing. God loves you. You just got to look for those blessings. And if nothing else is in your blessing box but Jesus, you're blessed. You're rich. And you have great wealth. Let me pray for you. Jesus, I'm so just always thankful for the words that you put in the Bible. And we just covered three verses today, but it's just, I feel like it is so important for where we are as a culture. Like we are marketed to that contentment comes from that next purchase. The next purchase is where we're going to feel better. God, help us know that contentment is only in you or great wealth is only in being content with what we already have. And so God, instead of us looking around for what we want, help us to look at what you've already given us and be grateful for it. And when we have nothing that we can find, we're looking, we're searching. We don't know if there's anything out there, any blessings. God, help us know that we have your son, Jesus. And that is always the greatest blessing any of us will ever have. And so, God, if we have you, we have great wealth. If we have nothing else, we have great wealth. But you blessed us to live in a country where we have stuff. And so, God, I just pray that we'll always know the source of what we have is from you. But the source of our joy is never in those things. It's always in you. And so, Jesus, help us with that. Help us to walk out of here, starting and ending every day, that when we open our eyes and we close our eyes, to just thank you for the blessings you've given us. And when we do that, we end up being more grateful. We end up actually spending a little less money and maybe getting back in black. But we end up seeing what's really, really important. And that's the main thing. So help us with that today. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Amen.